Hello everyone, we're here this afternoon at Risebridge Farm in Goudhurst in Kent, um, which is the home of the fantastic Mr Jason Webb. Um, so Jason, we're going to find out some uh, some details about you and how all this started. Um, now you've been horses around horses obviously and grown up with them all your life and being from Australia. So tell us a little bit about where you're from and how your passion for the horse world began. I'm from a little place called Tumut, which is... Um, Eastern Australia, midway between Sydney and Melbourne, basically in the middle of nowhere. My um, family run a, a farm, it's only a small farm of about 4,000 acres. We run sheep and cattle and horses and uh, obviously I used to trot along behind dad as, as a little guy and I was about knee high to a grasshopper and um, yeah I played polo cross which is my dad's sport, helped around the farm and then I got to a point where I thought you know, I want to compete at a, at a higher level and I need my horses to, to operate and function and do, do all these things. And then it started questions arising and these questions led to more questions and I'm How still trying to answer there? all these questions. It just goes on. So usually in the UK, we all grow up as kids around the horses and we have a first pony and join pony club and that's how it all began. And for celebrity riders as well, I think that's how their careers began. But obviously that was different for you. So did you have your own pony or was there literally 20 to choose from? No, Dad. I remember Dad bought us a little pony, uh, Winston. <laughs> now, the one thing that I remember, he was, he was a good little pony. He was quiet enough. You know, we used to play our cowboys and Indians on him and all that sort of thing. He's, he's good fun. But the one thing I do remember about Winston is he could open gates. I remember one day uh, we were waiting for someone to turn up and uh, the gate at the back is only wide enough to fit a horse through and it's weighted so it opens and it swings shut. I'm waiting for this person to turn up and I hear the gate slam shut. So I race out the back and there's uh, Winston coming in, in onto the green grass around the garden. I just thought, yeah, that's... So he's your typical cheeky little pony is what I learned to ride on. <laughs> Excellent. So. As we know you, you've obviously played polo cross at a huge international level and uh, I know that's how you met your lovely wife Penny through touring around the world. What was your greatest achievement with that? What's been your biggest moment? There's been a, there's been a few really. I mean, uh, in Australia I've played at some big competitions and probably my biggest achievement was winning one of the top horse prizes in Australia. Um, at, a, at the Victorian Championships, that was a big achievement for me. but. Since then, playing for the UK, I'm now a citizen over here, so they've allowed me to play. And I've played out in Australia at uh, Quad Series, and, you know, representing is always a, a great thrill. Um, but I think the main thing for me is winning horse prizes. I just love that. Do you take part in any other type of competition now in the horse world, or has it only been the polo cross? Well, it's finding the time, isn't it, Joe? You know, I. <laughs> You know, polo cross is played in the summer over here and I, I work, I've got my, my business and my training aspects to run and, and after, after I've ridden sort of 10 to 15 horses, then I jump on my horses and have a, you know, give them a work and practice and, you know, it's just, I don't really have the time to get into other disciplines. As much as I, you know, I admire the dressage riders, I do like jumping and all that sort of thing and I do all that, but not at a competitive level because time doesn't allow it. Now the polo cross horses, now you've got your own I believe here, you breed yeah. some and you bred your own horses, tell us a little bit about that. Well I've, I've actually imported some horses over, the Australian stock horses which I love, um, they're very trainable athletic horses and you know they're my choice of horses and actually while, while we're talking about them I, I just literally this year imported over one of the, a youngster that I bought as a foal with, with the help of my father. And uh, he came over and I played him in his first ever tournament this year and he won champion horse of the tournament, which playing, playing at the top level, which was such a great thing for me. So, you know, the Australian stock horses and, and thoroughbreds are, are my main sort of passion. Brilliant. Now you get asked to do quite a lot of demonstrations and things nowadays um, and you've got a fabulous black stallion called Diesel which yep. was at your horse live, so people yep. can see that on, uh, on the video as well. Tell us a little bit about him. Uh, I got Diesel's mother in foal whilst I was in Australia and uh, shipped her over. It was a little bit of a gamble. We didn't know whether she'd hold the foal because it's quite a, st a stressful trip across. But she did and um, I didn't intend to keep the foal as a stallion but he came out and I, I liked the look of him and you know he, he was doing everything pretty right. I started him and 
you know, he's just kept doing things that, that I like. And so I've kept him entire, very nice natured horse, which is almost the most important thing for me. And, you know, he's, he's just on the up now. I haven't really had the chance to compete him at anything because of time restrictions and that sort of thing. And polo cross, they're not allowed to play stallions in that sport. So he has to watch from the sideline. But I think I'll probably go out and do some dressage and some hunting and just, I mean, the stock horses are renowned for their versatility and that's what I want to showcase with him. So are we going to see you in top hat and tails on the dressage circuit then? I really struggle wearing <laughs> jumpers, you know. <laughs> People say, go on, you've got to go do a dressage test and they hand me the jumpers and I, I shy from those a little bit. can't do it. Yeah, I'm a bit, we'll of, a ge- I'm a bit of a jeans, jeans man, yeah. <laughs> um, now, the yard that you obviously run here, you've got a lot of liveries and people coming in asking for help and breaking them back in. Do you find people are a bit like, oh, and find it all a bit different with the tack and the uses? Tell us a little bit about that. <coughs> how, you've been, how you've been perceived in the, in the UK. I think initially it was, I was a little bit of a gamble to people, you know. They didn't know who I was and I did things very differently and... Um, but as, as time's gone along, I think my reputation's starting to build and people know that I can do the job and, and so they're more accepting of how I do things. And importantly for me is that if anyone has any questions, I can answer them. I can explain to them why I do things and, you know, there's a logical reason for, for everything. And it's a point to, to note that, you know, everything you do with a horse, you should be able to understand because if you can't understand it, well then horse can't so I explain to owners if there's if I'm having a little bit of trouble or you know when the horse has done the right thing when they're doing the wrong thing and how it works and they pretty soon oh it makes sense and so therefore they you know they have faith in you and they can see it in the horse yeah now I know you have a young family and your lovely wife Penny how do you juggle running a place like this and having home life and a social life as well or does that not exist well I think it's the same as every everyone's got work and kids and that sort of thing we all got to do a bit of juggling and you have your ups and your downs, I suppose. So, but, you know, at the moment things are great. You know, kids are fantastic age. Are the kids into the horses? Are they showing an interest? Well, Rosie, little girls, they love their horses. Jack, you know, he can take it or leave it. He comes down, has a sit on, and he's happy to go and chase bugs around or do what little boys do. Um, but yeah, no, I'm sure there'll come a time where he wants to do what his dad does and I'll be happy to support him. Fantastic. And just future plans, are, we, are you carrying on with the polo cross? Are we going to see you out or is this, are you going to, are you going to be in your top hat and tails and going out to take Carl on? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think Carl's got a fair jump on me there. <laughs> no, I think, you know, you might see me out at some, some dressage events and some other, other events. I think I'd like to do some jumping with Diesel and, you know, maybe see if some owners want to continue their training with me and uh, but you know I my you know I love my my polo cross and my ball sports I'll probably do some more polo as well um, but yeah I think you know versatility and being able to do all sorts of things and as you know you talk to all great trainers they they all never stop learning and I, I aim to be a, a great trainer one day and and um, so I'm, I'm going to go out and see what else I can learn. And your training philosophy when people come here is you spend quite a lot of time with the people rather than the horse, am I right there? You have to. I mean, uh, you know, I've, I'll do the work and get the basics on, on, on a horse, but to, to finish a horse off for someone else, they need to come in and understand, you know, their horse as a ridden horse or, you know, handling on the ground. And it's, it's very important that they sort of form a bit of a relationship and an understanding. And I'll give them the basic tools to go away with and hopefully, you know, develop as a, as a pair. Brilliant. Jason, it's been an absolute pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers, Joe.